So yes, like I said, this will be a terribly serious presentation about how to explain intersource to those uh, unfamiliar with it by using sports metaphors. <laughs> I am uh, the intersource community lead at Fannie Mae. I'm very passionate about developer experience, equity, and inclusion. My background is in higher ed IT and media production, and I am a mediocre home, home cook and above average cat dad. That is me as an eight-year-old, uh, I think that looks like I'm playing first base in suburban Baltimore. And if you want to check me out at the end, I'll, uh, I'll upload the slides and you can uh, look at LinkedIn and find me on Slack. All right. So howdy, Intersource fans. Uh, as we all have experienced, not many people know much about Intersource, but a statistically larger number probably do know a thing about sports. So let's kick off this presentation with a little sporty spice. Like it or not, a lot of people really love sports. Whether you're a sports enthusiast or not, there's no denying that many people out there absolutely love and adore it. It's like a universal language except with more sweat and cheering. Now, why do some people love sports so much? Well, that's a question for the ages, but one thing's for sure, just like some of us love sports, many of us also love using sports metaphors to explain things that are way more complex than a touchdown or a slam dunk. It may be lazy and crude, but it's popular. And just like a touchdown or a slam dunk is a measurement of positive progress, inner source principles can lead to successful software projects, right? Many people also use sports metaphors to explain complex concepts, like how a Serena Williams serve is a good example of potential and kinetic energy. It's not rocket science. A larger subset of people most likely have a more universal understanding of sports. Metaphors can make the concepts more relatable. And why do we do that, you ask? Well, it's like Ted Lasso's old granny used to say, when life throws you a curveball, sometimes you just got to tackle it like you're going for the goal. Or something like that. Just try explaining what a patlet is to a little league team. Now, a good coach like Ted Lasso also sees the drawbacks of certain strategies. Using the sports metaphor most likely oversimplifies and trivializes your topic while also making assumptions that your audience has any knowledge or interest in sports and could further alienate them. Hopefully not you. Now, some folks might say it's unwise to compare inner source to sports, but hey, if it helps us understand it better, then count me in. After all, every great team needs a playbook, right? Okay, here's the million dollar question. How does all this sports talk actually help us with Intersource? I mean, what even is an Intersource anyway? It's like trying to explain the offside as a rule to your uncle who's never seen a soccer ball. For one thing, sports metaphors can really help your confused family member understand that slack is more than a pair of pants. Sometimes the biggest problem with Intersource is the lack of familiarity. So let's make up some sports metaphors for the inevitable family dinner questions. Think of it like this. Just as basketball is a type of sport, inner source is a type of software development strategy. The repo, that's your court. And the arena is being constantly upgraded. They even have two Shake Shacks and a spa, whether it be GitHub Center, the GitLab Spectrum, or the Bitbucket Garden, every software team has a repo to play and practice in. The players, they're your project collaborators. They're your teammates, passing us the ball back and forth and running plays like there's no tomorrow. A good intersource team is made up of several diverse and different roles, all complementing one another like the Harlem Globetrotters. Who are the Harlem Globetrotters, you ask? Well, Wikipedia says, the Harlem Globetrotters are an American exhibition basketball team. They combine athleticism, theater, entertainment, and comedy in their style of play. Over the years, they have played more than 26,000 exhibition games in 124 countries and territories, and mostly against deliberately ineffective opponents. They've almost never lost. But that's a story for another time. Where was I? 
All right. We were talking about inner source, and guess what? You're all on the same team. So what do some of these players contribute? Let's take a look at a few of their basketball cards. Now, all right, imagine the world of inner source as a basketball game. Now, in this game, we've got our trusted committers playing a crucial role, just like the star players on the team. Think of the trusted committers as the point guards, the ones who know the ins and outs of the game, just like how Michael Jordan knows every move on the court. These trusted committers are like seasoned veterans, the ones who have proven themselves time and time again. They orchestrate the team's movements, facilitate collaboration, and ensure smooth execution of plays. Pull requests. Now, in basketball, when a player earns the trust of their teammates and coach, they become a vital part of the team's strategy. Similarly, in inner source, a trusted committer is someone who's earned the trust of their peers and project leaders. They're the ones who can drive the game forward, making crucial decisions and leading by example. They're the ones who review and approve contributions, ensuring that only the best ideas make it onto the court, or in this page, or in this case, the code base. If an inner source trusted maintainer were to play a specific basketball position, they would play center. Just as the center is pivotal in both offense and defense, the trusted maintainer anchors the project, ensuring its stability and cohesion. Like a center dominating the paint, the maintainer oversees the code base, ensuring its integrity and reliability. They provide support to their teammates, just as the center supports their fellow players on the court, stepping in where needed to address challenges and maintain momentum. Much like how a center is crucial for rebounds and blocks, the trusted maintainer oversees the review and approval process, making critical decisions to keep the project moving forward efficiently. In essence, they're the backbone of the team, providing leadership, stability, and direction. Next up, an inner source core team member and code reviewer, they would be the shooting guard. Much like how a shooting guard analyzes plays and makes quick decisions on the court, the code reviewer meticulously examines code contributions, identifying strength, strengths and weaknesses with precision. A shooting guard provides critical feedback to teammates during gameplay with their zoomed out view of the offense. The code reviewer offers valuable insights and suggestions to developers, ensuring that the code meets quality standards and aligns with the project goals. Like a shooting guard, who must possess sharp attention to detail and quick reflexes, the code reviewer exercises keen judgment and attention to detail, making split-second decisions to maintain the integrity and efficiency of the code base. In essence, they're the sharpshooters of the team, bringing clarity and accuracy to the review process, much like how a shooting guard brings precision and finesse to the game. An inner source product owner would be a forward or a team captain. Just as the coach helps set the team strategy, vision, and goals, the product owner defines the direction and objectives of the project. A team captain communicates game plans and strategies to players, just like how the product owner communicates project requirements and priorities to the dev team. They oversee the entire dev process, making critical decisions and adjustments to ensure that the project aligns with the organization's objectives and meets stakeholder needs. Like a power forward who drives the ball to the net, the product owner encourages collaboration, fosters innovation, and drives the project towards success. In essence, they're the guiding force behind the team, providing leadership, direction, and support throughout the development journey. Now here's an obvious one. An inner source architect is the team's head coach. Like a head coach who carefully designs plays and strategies to maximize the team's strengths, the architect meticulously plans and designs the software infrastructure, ensuring it supports the project's long-term goals and objectives. Just as a coach guides players to make the right moves on the court, the architect guides developers to make informed technical decisions that align with the project's architecture and standards. They provide vision, leadership, and expertise, shaping the direction of the project and empowering the team to achieve success. In essence, they're the mastermind behind the scenes, orchestrating the game plan and driving the team towards victory. And we can't forget about leadership. In an inner source context, leadership operates much like a basketball general manager orchestrating the team's strategy, fostering a culture of teamwork, and aligning efforts with organizational objectives. 
They set the vision for inner source initiatives, much like a GM sets the tone for a basketball team season. In addition to promoting collaboration and innovation, inner source leaders, like a GM, help communication flow across departments, ensuring that everyone is on the same page and working towards common goals. They actively scout for talent, identifying con contributors who can add value to projects, and they oversee the development process, much like a GM oversees player development and roster management. Ultimately, InterSource leadership, much like a basketball GM, aims to build a winning team, driving the organization towards success through effective collaboration and strategic management. And guess what? The league is your organization. So when, you, when you're playing the inner source game, you're not just playing for yourself, you're playing for every developer, every consumer, every user. And why, another question, why should I care? You can already hear some of your colleagues at work or cousins or your mom's house asking that question. Why do I care about inner source? Maybe more sports metaphors can help. Coach on a team writes a playbook but never shares it anyone. It's like developing software in a cycle. They never won the title. Teams that utilize InterSource can unlock their full potential by leveraging untapped resources previously unavailable to conventional dev teams. So share your playbook with the whole team. Imagine if the Chicago Bulls never passed the Michael Jordan. Crazy. Well, that's what developing software in a silo is like. Share your playbook with the whole team and watch the magic happen. Can InterSource make my code better? Well, well, we all know the answer is yes. More eyes on the code can lead to an increase in contributions. A larger, more diverse set of developers can also lead to an improvement in software quality and code fixes and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But how can we teach this? I think we know what's coming, more sports metaphors. When your core team hits a plateau, it's time to shake things up and hold tryouts. Just like a sports team holding tryouts, InterSource invites fresh contributions to your code, helping your team move into first place. Those extra pull requests from the bench really added some invaluable features to the project. And finally, folks, here's the grand finale. Winning the InterSource championship, because we all want our sporty audience to know when you play the game right, when you embrace collaboration and openness, you're not just winning small victories, you're winning the big game of implementing a novel software development strategy. So the next time you find yourself struggling to explain inner source concepts, what should you do? Well, you should probably attend training camp. <laughs> Some professionals would join an organization called the Inner Source Commons and leverage the invaluable depth of knowledge found there. But in the meantime, use sports metaphors. Questions? That's it.